Hello. Good afternoon from Italy. My name is Lucy and I work for Dark City Coopers. Welcome everyone. We will start in a couple of minutes. This is Politecnico di Milano's webinar. Today we're going to talk about Italian excellence for the future. And I am so glad to have Chiara Mambretti, International Marketing and Promotion Office. Amalie and Gael, they both study architecture. And we will soon begin. For those who have just joined, my name is Lucy and I work for Dog City and Coopers. The community is for the students. And we will start at 5 Italian time, 10 a.m. CST time. Hello everyone, I'll send you a message on chat. Thank you so much for being with us, for taking the time to join us for this online event. We will start in one minute. After the presentation, you can ask all of your questions to Chiara, Amalie and Gael. Please use the questions and answers section, okay? Write down everything that you want to know about the courses of Politecnico di Milano, and we will answer everything in the second part of the webinar. Hello, Mifi, welcome. Who else is here? Barbara, Luca, Milena, Sofia, David, thank you so much for joining us. It is time that we begin. Once again, this is Politecnico di Milano's webinar. I hope you enjoy it. And I leave the floor to Chiara Mambre, who is in charge of International Marketing and Promotion Office. Welcome, girls. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very thank much you. for the introduction. And uh, hi, everybody. Um, it's great to know you're there listening to, to us. Uh, to listen about the university I represent and these girls are studying it at the moment. Um, I'm talking about Politecnico di Milano, obviously. My name is Chiara, I work in the recruitment office of the university and I will uh, introduce you to the university, but overall today you will have the great opportunity to have um, someone who's actually studying at the university now, sharing their experience. And uh, of course, you can ask any questions you might have. Um, the Politecnico di Milano is a technical university. It's based in Milan, Italy, and it offers the three um, uh, faculties you see here, architecture, design, and engineering, uh, since 1863. Uh, in fact, it was established as a school of engineering uh, and then the new faculties of architecture and design uh, were created and they're really well ranked uh, nowadays. Before uh, we start uh, talking, I would like to um, share with you a video which describes in details what's Politecnico di Milano today for uh, all of us and the community uh, in Milan. There's a need for transformation that cannot be overlooked. There are no easy solutions. We must push forward. We're living in an intense, vibrant period of history, and it's becoming increasingly urgent to plan our country's future. It will take creativity, flexibility, and technological innovation. We need speed and expertise to manage this change. At this moment, Milan's reputation is at an all-time high. Politecnico is an attractive, large, open laboratory in the heart of Milan, featuring the innovative study programs needed to prepare for new professions and to face new challenges. The research and experimentation of today will illuminate tomorrow. We need creativity and intuition. This is a great opportunity. The challenges that lie before us are tough. Now's the time to take our destiny into our own hands, to seize the day, to pioneer the change. We must stay switched on.
So that's an overview of what University uh, Politecnico di Milano is, what, what the mission of the university is for all of us. Um, we have worked, we, we're, we're working on the technology. Um, we try to be always innovative, but we know that technology needs minds. Uh, and it's, the, it's, it's important to have this connection. So we try to train the students, educate them and get ideas uh, from the students themselves to innovate uh, the world in many different areas, uh, as you will see very soon. Um, this is also a reason why we are internationally recognized. Do you might be a reason why you're listening to us uh, today. You, you might have heard about Politecnico di Milano as a leading European university. It's in fact, it's really the first Italian university according to QS University ranking. And it's ranked uh, among the first 20 universities in the world in the three fields um, of studies offered by the university. So it's prestigious, it's hard. I think <laughs> the students uh, are now um, challenged by the exam sessions. So, yeah. <laughs> They're really uh, intensively uh, involved in this, and they can confirm. Um, but uh, it's it, it's worth it. So uh, we are part of also very important uh, networks like Idea League, the one you see here on the screen, uh, which allow the students to go abroad for an exchange program um, for a period of of their um, study uh, experience and uh, to share ideas, to share practices um, with these important European universities. And this is just one of the leagues of the networks we are part of as a, a university in Europe. Uh, and yes, we are international, but we are Italian. And overall, we are Milanese. We are from Milan, we're based in Milan, we grew up in Milan uh, as a university. And our um, uh, experience uh, our mission is rooted in uh, in the city and the in the, in the territory um, that's really important because there is there's also and always a very strong connection with the territory around us um, there is that cooperation uh, with the, the municipality of Milan and a lot of other institutions in the city uh, and at the moment we have about one thousand eight uh, sorry 180,000 students uh, in the city of Milan from abroad. So international students decided to come, um, sorry, all together, community of 1, 180,000 students from uh, all over the world and Italians included. It's a very mo modern city, let's say, but also you can find a lot of very historical uh, places and, and, and monuments. Uh, it's cosmopolitan and uh, international and it's full of dynamic situations, creativity, technology, innovation. Um, it's uh, quite interesting to be here, in my opinion, but let's ask the students what they think about this, um, <laughs> if you agree with this. Yeah, uh, absolutely, I agree. It's, uh, it's Italian, but it's very open to the world as a city, so you won't be too lost culturally if you're from anywhere, I guess. I think also, well, I grew up in the suburbs of Maryland, so it's very different <laughs> also living in a city <laughs> as well. Um, so, I mean, I'm impressed with the transportation and amount of uh, um, options to get from one side of city to the other. Um, I think it's great. Um, and then also looking at the pictures on the uh, presentation, you have the Galleria. Navili is also a very nice area um, in the evenings in the summertime, I've heard. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are small pockets of the city that are old and then you have the contemporary parts. So it's, it's really a great city to be in as a student. And uh, the girls here um, arrived in September, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so they haven't enjoyed the uh, summer, the spring and the summertime yet. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, we are close to an <laughs> and the hospital, so that's why you hear the sound. Every, everybody's fine, anyway. And um, so they, they haven't experienced this period of the year yet, so we, we invite you for the next webinar in, uh, let's say, June, so you can uh, no more compare, compare yeah. this. Yeah. But yes, it's really enjoyable as a city. Um, 
and I really uh, I'm very surprised because it's growing a lot so uh, I travel a lot for work and uh, like I may my stay away for like two, two weeks and then sometimes I come back and a new skyscraper is, is there it wasn't there and then like, it was built very like mm -hmm. suddenly so it's uh, it's uh, in, uh, always an innovative um, it's nice to be here to 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 leave the city as a student. It's life to leave it. Uh, it's also when you finish, when you have a career, you might decide to stay forever. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's let's say we have this experience, and uh, we really believe the Politecnico di Milano and the life in Milan is uh, uh, something everybody should experience. At least we like it. Um, and let's see what happens when you are a student of Politecnico di Milano. If, like you can get something from this video, I'm sure. And uh, um, I will be, uh, I'm sure you're gonna be very curious and uh, willing to uh, book a flight to Milan uh, as soon as the video is finished. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can I? Sorry, that is this. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, it's not always like that. <laughs> it's not always sunny. It's not always like you have free time to go <laughs> around the city, right? But sometimes it happens and you can enjoy. Uh, Gail is from uh, Montreal. Montreal. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so some of you might be from there and uh, probably snow is all around you. No? <laughs> this period of year. Well, yes, here. For sure. There's snow right now in Montreal. And well, here is. Sunny, it's quite warm, so absolutely. <laughs> it's That's also here. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a reason to come. <laughs> Fine. And so just to give you a very quick information about how it might be life at the Polytechnic de Milano, we have that lab, we have those labs, we have the um the classes, we have uh also open air um, areas where students can study if when it's sunny and when it's warm. And um, it's um, uh, it's a very it's very open for for all the students. Uh, but yes, we are based in Milan. We have campus in Milan Leonardo uh, in Milan Le uh, Bovisa, but also we have other um, campuses around the uh, Lombard region, uh, which are Como, Cremona, Lecco, Mantova, and Piacenza. The cities you will see like described there on the screen uh, on the map. Um, you might be from very big countries like uh, US or Canada, um, but in our country it's not so big. So the region you see in black uh, in the north, Visley, is Lombardy. It's definitely not so big, either, even if well populated, <laughs> um, but the distances are small. So if you, uh, let's say from Como to Milan, it's about one hour by train, from Mantova to Milan, it's maximum two hours by train. So it's uh, very easy to go around uh, Lombardia. And there's always a reason why we teach a specific program on a specific campus. So sometimes, uh, for example, we have Man the Mantova uh, campus is in, in Mantua, which is an UNESCO site it's under the patronage of UNESCO. And that's why we have the program, we offer the program in uh, architectural design, um, sorry, architectural design and history in this, on this specific campus because of the connection with, uh, let's say, restoration, preservation of the cultural heritage and uh, the areas um, where it's offered. So if you have a look at the programs on our website, you will see um, that they're offering diff on different campuses and discover you can discover where they're located and how to get there, for example. Uh, and at, in this moment, in this last uh, month, uh, a new campus has been um, 
built. Uh, we are uh, experiencing this, yes. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All the campuses are on, on the renovation. And the, pro, the campus uh, is based on a project for Renzo Piano. So we are building it on the project Renzo Piano uh, gave to us. It's like a present for, from him. Um, it's going to include uh, about a thousand square meters of new green areas, a lot of labs, classrooms and study rooms, um, and common areas um, for students and the community of the university. Uh, and it's going to be brand new uh, in, uh, in September 2020. So if you decide to apply to Polytechnico, come and study here, you're going to be on this new campus uh, <laughs> uh, very soon. And uh, we look forward to see it because we're like, we experienced the building phase. Yes, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> um, so Renzo Piano was uh, an alumnus of Politecnico, is an alumno of Politecnico Milano. He studied here. Uh, he's a very famous architect. I guess you girls knew him, yeah. him before coming here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, many of you probably know him. Um, he, come, he came a couple of times for the opening of the academic year and he was here with the students and uh, he was open to questions and share his experience with the, um, with the students. And we can mention also other people who, were alum who are alumni of Politecnico di Milano, like Aldo Rossi, another famous architect, and a person who won the Nobel Prize, so Giulio Natta. Um, for the engineers who are here, um, well, I'm not gonna explain anything about this specific research. Uh, he won the, the Nobel Prize for it because I'm not um, an engineer. And I don't want to, to go into details uh, of a field I don't know, but what I know and I wanna share with you is that this helped us um, increase the research level, uh, reach a very high level in, uh, in teaching and in, um, in researching. And so that's why a lot of like some professors from abroad will come to, to teach at Politecnico di Milano, like the visiting team professors you see here on the screen, because you say Gima, Eduardo Soto de Mura, they're actually um, here for, uh, for, for teaching uh, for our students, and others also are uh, part of, uh, international professors are uh, part of the faculty. Um, so this is also an, an international experience uh, at Politecnico di Milano. And thanks to the, the things I said, thanks to not, Giulio Natta, to the professors we had here, to all the very ta uh, talented students we, we have and we had, uh, we can do research at Politecnico. So you can come here, study here, but also enter the labs, do research, uh, attend a PhD or a research group and work in the laboratories we have on campus. Um, thanks also to the fundings we get from the European Union. So we are first university in Italy for projects funded by the European Commission. And those are the results. A lot of uh, patents, um, uh, very important uh, innovations and um, like continuing uh, research and, and science, uh, research opportunities here at Politecnico di Milano. Um, as I know that the, the girls here are not uh, yet, uh, didn't have the possibility to enter the labs yet because they have mm -hmm. like uh, been working on the theory more maybe. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes. But the fusion ones will be more practical so you will experience answered labs and uh, but you will find know. lots of architecture students building models in the architecture building yeah so <laughs> I will say the the architecture building on campus is unique at least the Agora area because it um, allows students from the entire campus engineering architecture students to come together um, to be in a, a similar co-working space um, so you get to see kind of what's happening yeah in various realms yeah, so you see it's other working on the project, you can like share your experience and yeah, that's the, the aim of the university, like a physical university is where you, you can see the other students and you can exchange and share your ideas and doubts maybe and, and get some uh, inputs from the others mm -hmm. or share yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the building is uh, the, here in Polytechnic are mainly that way, so you can uh, see a lot of students around. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you can see students around from the many different uh, levels of education because we have, uh, this is the system, uh, the Italian system of education. We have studied 13 years at school, after which we enter a laurea, so a bachelor degree, which lasts uh, three years. So also bachelor students are 
around uh, mm -hmm. the young ones like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then there are the you can enter master uh, level which lasts two years and uh, in Italy after which you can decide to join a PhD if you like research if you want to go on with your academic career or you can if you wish to uh, like increase your level uh, your knowledge in a specific field and then enter the job market because PhD is not only uh, academic like for acad an academic career but also to have a specific level when you go uh, and you spend yourself your, your experience on the in the job market uh, let's talk about what we offer. So uh, I told you it's a very international university. It's also Italian because it's uh, like rooted in in in, in Italy. Uh, but um, the program are in English. So many programs, as you see here, are taught in English. It means you don't need to know Italian if you wish to come here. Do you do you know? The, did you know Italian when you arrived? No. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. Me, yeah. No. <laughs> no. So. Is that you don't need to know the language to be here. Um, it helps, of course. I don't need to deny that. <laughs> yeah, it helps for daily life, but on campus, you'll be surrounded by mm -hmm. international students, mm -hmm. and most students speak English in mm -hmm. different countries. Yeah. So you say, yeah, you don't, don't have to worry about that. And if you decide to come and, and want to study Italian, you can do that because we do, we do have courses of Italian here on campus. And also you can find other solutions out of, of campus, of course. Uh, Milan That's is quite big. Okay. As Amalia, there are right? many opportunities in the city to study. Yeah. So yeah, um, don't worry about that. <laughs> and also you can come and then ex go for exchange, uh, have the opportunity to do a double degree and, and so on. So it's, it might be a very international experience here in Islay and also uh, for a period abroad. Um, it's international also because we have a lot of international students. As you, as you heard, uh, on campus, you can speak English all the time because students are from all over the world. They speak English. Uh, Italian students speak English as well. And now you see uh, the number of students, the community of international students is growing a lot uh, in the last years. Um, we have now more than 6,000 international students enrolled at the university from more than 100 countries. The majority of them are on the, the Lara Magistrale program. Uh, and this is the provenience of the of the students, you see, um, from all over the world, basically. <laughs> it's uh, really international from many points of view. Do you have international students in your class? Many yes. students. Yes. Most of them. I'd say more than half. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, even in for my urban design studio, I had one person from Armenia, Turkey, and then in Italian, and we worked together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then also, Gail I had Greek uh, from in Algeria or mm -hmm. Egypt, and mm -hmm. yeah, a bit everywhere. Yeah, it's it's a uh, word. Yeah, multiple yeah. bots <laughs> nowadays. Following yeah. in Milano, yeah, yeah, it's, it's super interesting. Yeah. yeah. So we hope you will decide to come and see how it is here. You're going to be part of this community uh, of international students, meeting Italian students in, uh, in Milan. And what can you study here? So, um, as I said, it's an international university based in Milan, uh, which offer architecture, design and engineering. But in details, what, what you can study? You can study this uh, master programs you see here on the screen. I repeat it, they, are, like, they last two years. Uh, you girls are uh, enrolled in architecture and urban design, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're um, like uh, you have a background in architecture and you want to go on with this, uh, you can choose among the one the programs you see here. Um, then, uh, and then, of course, the, the requirement is to have a background in architecture because you will need a portfolio to enter, you will need to the expertise and knowledge of the programs you have to use and so on. So it's important uh, to, uh, to have a background in architecture. It's compulsory, in fact, except for urban planning, landscape, architecture and building architecture. Uh, then, of course, we have a programs in design. Uh, two-year programs in a master level in the different fields of design, product, interior, design engineering, um, fashion, uh, communication design. And as I said at the beginning, we are sixth in the world in the field of design. So you should consider this opportunity if you, um, if you have a background in design, uh, work experience in design. 
uh, and of course you have to remember that we have the design week taking place in April every week, every year, um, which is also visitable. So you can come and, and come and visit and see how it is uh, next April to have an idea of uh, the atmosphere around here. They, they will be here and it's going to be the first time for you here. So I'm excited. Yeah. You will see. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite exciting. It's confusing, but also exciting. <laughs> and um, of course, as I said, we were established in a school of engineering. So this is a whole list of programs in engineering uh, we offer. Uh, we have two new programs in food engineering and mobility engineering, which are um, uh, also in cooperation with the com some companies. Uh, so they're brand new programs, but all the others are uh, very well uh, known and um, uh, international in many ways. And so of course, we need to be cooperative with other universities. You now, you know, you, you might be very, um, well, you might know very well a field, a specific area, but then you also have to, to get skills in other uh, fields. And this is the aim of this master program, Cyber Risk Strategy and Governance and Bioinformatics for Computational Dynamics, which are offered by Polini with other uh, universities in Milan, Bocconi and La Statale. Uh, fine, so we get to the favorite questions of all the students uh, from all over the world, <laughs> which is, I was like, okay, but how much is that? <laughs> so the cost for master programs for European students depend on the income of the family or of the students, so 900 to 3,900 euros per year, uh, while non-European students pay 3,900 euros per year as a fixed uh, fee. Um, this much can be waived by merit-based scholarships offered by the university, uh, which are the ones you see here, platinum, gold, and silver, and it means that they are based on the documents you provide when you apply. And there is also the opportunity to, to have this fee um, waived by other scholarships offered by the government of Italy, like Investor Town in Italy Scholarship and Maichi. But of course, you will find this information on the website you see on the screen. And uh, also, if you have a, a US nationality, so if you come from the US, uh, you can apply for a Fulbright Award uh, in the field of architecture or design. And uh, today we have like a testimonial <laughs> of this because Emily was. Uh, got this scholarship, so congratulations for yes, all. <laughs> thank you. And if you want to, to share something about this opportunity with uh, uh, Yeah, I mean, I'm very happy to have received the opportunity. Um, this was back, I probably heard last April, mm -hmm. um, and I was super excited um, to hear back from the Fulbright Commission. And, um, I actually had the opportunity to go to Rome in October um, to meet other Fulbrighters who are studying, doing research and very cool projects around Italy. Uh, I'm actually maybe even visiting um, a few of the teaching assistants because they're typically located in Sicilia, which is south. Um, so it's, <laughs> it's a great opportunity to meet other people besides um, the peers you meet in um, your education here at Polytechnic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So have a look at that. That, that. that scholarship is also listed on our website, and um, just don't, don't miss the opportunity if you wish to come for twenty twenty one. Of course, because the, the, the application is quite early. Usually, it's it until October. October. Yeah, yeah. So just if check you think out. Ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is the finance thing, uh, and uh, the period when you can apply to master programs is here. You can apply from September to March, basically, for entering the first semester, which is what uh, they did. Um, and then if you wish to uh, come for the second semester, which is February, um, you have to apply from May to July, but that's only for engineers, because the School of Design and Architecture does not accept students on the second semester. What to do to apply? Like, uh, they probably don't even remember what they did because <laughs> no. this was some time ago. <laughs> yeah, but they sure. said to me that it was not so hard for this part, right? Okay. <laughs> Initial steps are pretty, pretty Small, good. Pretty okay. clear. Yeah, just to have, make sure just you need read. to be on time and have all the right papers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, so basically what you have to do is to go online, create your own for 
profile your page, uh, provide your uh, bachelor degree and transcript, uh, CV, course description, motivation and recommendation letters, um, portfolio if you apply to design and uh, architecture, language certificates, and by that I mean the English language certificate. And, and you see the list of the accepted documents, accepted certificates on the screen here, and the GRE if you apply for uh, to energy and management engineering. This is the package of documents I think any university would ask you to provide, so it's not surprising. <laughs> um, it's quite uh, fixed as a requirement. Uh, the documents must be in English or in your original language plus translation into English but in, in fact we accept document uh, official documents from the university in Spanish French English and in translation of course uh, in Italian um, you need to have uh, to check the requirements so basically have, be sure you have a, sp a relevant background so a specific background for the program you you choose you need to have a minimum gpa if you come from specific countries and then you know you need to know english but i guess if you're here in front of us listening to us i probably you probably understand what you're saying <laughs> um and uh that's the basic requirements you can apply for two programs at the same time so just check them in details uh on the website and then you have to send by post your transcript and the application received to us. There is the option also to send the transcript directly from university to university, so you can ask and investigate with your home university if they can send it to us directly, and that's definitely possible for all of you. And then also, um, when you're choosing your programs, you also want to pick priorities, so yeah. maybe um, for your first priority, definitely look at, look at the program again and um, because I believe if you are um, accepted into yeah. your first program, then you um, they automatically uh, reject your application for the second yes. program that you apply for. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, just decide which program you really like and put it first choice and then a second choice. Yeah, this makes sense, uh, I think, even logically. <laughs> so after that, we evaluate you. We You should check your application status and then uh, we will contact you for all the first steps. We don't focus on that much because it's quite early, but just to give you an idea that we, you need to set the admission to get half opportunities to, to get the merit-based scholarships. And then of course you have to get in contact with the embassy, the consulate, go yeah. through all the bureaucracy. It's what you said, like it's the- It's start warm up yeah. <laughs> so before arriving. Yeah. <laughs> the warm up because a lot of bureaucracy will be done also here yeah. um but yeah the, we don't want to bother you with that it's gonna be we will be available for any questions about that later <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah consider you need a visa to come if you are from a european country uh and uh anyway get in contact with the embassy and consulate so what happens when you arrive? Like, okay, God, I did this all thing. And like, I'm exhausted. I'm warmed up. Uh, so now what? Uh, okay, of course you come and you have to study. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, but we also try to make it easier, to make it enjoyable. Um, so we give a wide range of services and uh, opportunities to the students. We as a university, but also students to students. Uh, so of course, you can join students' associations. You can uh, practice your sport if you are fond of sport. Um, you can live in the residences of the university or you can decide to stay us outside. Uh, you can uh, book the, uh, not a place uh, with a specific code, uh, discount code we have through ESN uh, associations. And so there are many opportunities. Um, you can apply to get a buddy. So the buddy is a person, a student who's already here, might be one of them, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> if they decide to be. Um, they just uh, give you information, answer all your questions you have, uh, you might have all your doubts, any, any uh, problem you might, uh, uh, you might go through, or just be friends, go out for uh, uh, um, spritz, an aperitivo. <laughs> um, okay, so just to, to have a person, a uh, you know, contact person before coming, was a student of Politecnico di Milano. 
of course you can study Italian, you can study different languages, and as I said, you can go abroad for uh, exchange. Definitely, it's definitely possible to get discounts for a lot of uh, activities on, in, on campus, but overall outside, so in the city. For even travels, you can go, like, to, you can join associations and go for uh, a trip uh, in a different city or in a different country for a very cheap price. Uh, of course, we do organize welcome events to welcome you, to let you know uh like to, to let you know each other and that's something you experienced girls right at the beginning yeah, of your study yeah, yeah. yeah the first week here yeah during the last week uh and of course students who has a specific needs or uh, are like visible students uh, they we do have services for you so uh do not worry you can get in contact with us and we will uh explain any, everything in details and this is my opinion the their opinion, but uh, we also have someone who wanted to share his experience um, in uh, the last uh, June, uh, if I don't mistake, and this is Timothy from the US. Um, he's an alumna, alumnus already, so he's finished and he's, he's doing his project in design, but he wanted to share with us his, uh, his point of view. <laughs> Hi, my name is Timothy. I'm from the United States near Philadelphia and I am a recent graduate from the master's program in product design here at the Politecnico di Milano and I also uh, had the opportunity to participate in Alta Scuola Politecnica. Number one, Politecnico has uh, an excellent program in design but in addition uh, I really wanted to have an experience that was very different from my previous degree and studying in Milan uh, really opened up my uh, my perspective to to Europe and uh, to the culture here. I was really surprised um, uh, to, to see all the different dimensions of Milan. Uh, I remember going to Design Week uh, in April and seeing, uh, you know, every major designer represented here. Um, big product launches, big events, parties, and I was surprised and impressed, frankly, that at just how lively Milan is. It's, it's a small town, but at times it feels like the center of the world. When you come to study at Politecnico, your classroom extends beyond this building. Uh, the, whole, the whole city is your classroom. So this is just um, a, a preview. <laughs> you can see the whole video on, on our YouTube channel. Um, uh, but yeah, this is uh, what the person who's been here for two years and coming from the U.S. Uh, has experienced uh, and uh, wanted to share with us. Uh, we were discussing before with Emily and, uh, and Gael uh, that the system in, in Milan and in the educational system is quite different right, from our countries. Yeah, <laughs> specifically architecture school, if there are any architecture students listening. Um, yeah, I mean, architecture school, um, I guess, definitely ranges from US, Canada, but even going to, coming here to Europe definitely opened my eyes. Um, I guess lots of group work, collaborating, but it's also a perfect opportunity to meet the, all the international students that we have here at Politecnica. Um, also, I, also what I pointed out earlier, um, the Agora, the unique co-working space in the architecture building is very unique. and. Um, it's a perfect way to just kind of meet other Italians and other students casually. Yeah, um, and I guess that's one of the biggest differences. There's no private studios, so everybody's yeah. together all the time. Yeah. And you blend with other departments and other people from around the world. So yeah, it's yeah. definitely different and a good experience. Until now, sure. yeah. 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 <laughs> that's great to hear um yeah it's uh, very true it's very italian because we don't really like privacy that much <laughs> we like to share to be yeah. together it to have open. fun and parties and yeah, yeah to be open as much yeah. as we can so yeah uh, that's also an italian uh, cultural experience <laughs> yes yeah, i also i agree with timothy's comment on um, beyond the classroom, you, you just, there are so many opportunities to kind of widen your worldview or perspective, um, like just going out to get a coffee on the other side of the city is just, it's refreshing to get out of uh, mm -hmm. the institution, but um, it's, it's, it's great living here in Milan. Yeah, and there's always something happening, there's always 
either a design event, museum, <laughs> anything. If Always you like something art. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not boring, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's true that it's, uh, it's really important to share for us. And that's something that happens also in uh, in this program, which is called Alta Scuola Politecnica. Uh, it's a joint program between Politecnico di Milano and Politecnico di Torino. Uh, they select 150 top students from master programs of the two universities, and they ask them to work together on different projects proposed by the companies. So um, that's a way to work on projects with students who are from different backgrounds. So not only from different countries, but also from with a different approach, a different perspective on the same project and the same problem, and uh, solve it together. So it's a um, it's a great opportunity. You can also think about parallel to the master program. So the hard part of the master program plus the hard part of Alta Scuola Politecnica but um, it, it's worth it. So you will get back a lot of things and, the skill, and skills, of course. And after you finish your career, the master program, uh, there are a lot of opportunities. You can choose to stay here for a PhD program. Just to give you an idea, we have 19 programs in English, a lot of opportunities. Um, the cost is zero, so it's free, but you can get scholarship for uh, your being here, uh, you being here, and you can spend up to 18 months abroad during the PhD. Um, and this is something you can do after your master here, or if you're there and you have a master degree and you want to come here for a PhD, you can go online and from April to May apply to come here in November. Uh, the fields are the same as uh, for the master program. So you see here that architecture, design and engineering and uh, in different fields. Uh, and all the PhD programs last three years. If you don't want to go on with the PhD, but you have ideas, you can propose them to the, your, uh, to the Poly Hub, which is um, a startup incubator. Uh, it's worth top five and uh, it's in Politecnico Milano, so it's based on the campus of Bovisa. Uh, we get funds, uh, we get funds from the European Union and from the municipality, from the companies, and this is a way to create your own startup and maybe a small company uh, through the university itself. Or you can enter the career, the, the career job, so the, sorry, the, the job market, so uh, take part and uh, get in contact with the career service, which is an office on uh, campus, um, they are in charge of offering uh, job opportunities to the students. It's not really a placement office, but it's like you, you can have the opportunity to work on your CV, um, application, a job application letter, or um, any documents you are required to, to, to provide for your uh, job interview uh, at the assessment center of career service. Uh, you can apply to, uh, to job opportunities on the website. You can attend, the, of course, the job fairs, which are organized on campus here, and I always rely on, on my colleagues uh, dealing with this. And these are the results. So international students who graduated the Politecnico di Milano um, got a job, like 91% of engineers, 90% of architects, and 79% of designers got a job in, within one year from graduation in their field of study. So let's say it's not bad <laughs> you can rely on this you can all, always uh, be in contact with us and with the community of the alumni of Politecnico di Milano uh, which are which is a big community uh, of course I mentioned the most important most famous uh, like alumni of Politecnico but there are a lot of people who are like normal people like you um, and and me which uh, who are working now uh, in different uh, countries, in different cities. So you can browse the website and just have a look of where they are, if they get in contact with them and ask um, more about their experience and they, what they want to share with you. And of course, you might be one of them next. Uh, in the future, let's say, three to five years. And of course, you girls. <laughs> so it's important. So the community of Politecnico di Milano is a community. So if you start uh, studying here, you never forget Politecnico. That's not, not my experience because I didn't study here, but my dad did, my brothers did, my cousins did. Um, I work here for already 10 years and I have this experience. I feel Politecnico di Milano as part of my life. Um, and I uh, really enjoy it. Uh, so it's a big community you can always rely on. 
uh, international community and I'm really happy to have uh, these two girls today with me um, and, and to hear this experience is uh, challenging somehow but also interesting and uh, enriching. <laughs> Um, and I hope you will have a lot of questions for us. So first of all, I leave you the contacts um, so you can have a look on the website of Polytechnico, contact us through the uh, inquiry form and of course follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn and of course uh, Twitter. Um, I know you're, you're all young, very social people, so uh, please uh, find out more on, on, uh, about us on social media. And uh, overall, ask all your questions now because we are really here for that, right? Uh, we want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much uh, for your attention and now it's your turn. Thank you, girls. You've been really good with the timing, 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we start with the questions now? If, if you like to drink a glass of water and... Uh, start with the question. Everyone, two things before we start answering, answering all your questions, doubts, curiosities. Yes, you will receive all the information, if not tomorrow, Friday, on Monday. So don't worry and keep an eye out for our email, okay? With all the contents of Politecnico di Milano, all the information that you need to know, uh, deadlines, requirements, etc. And please remember to submit your questions using the Q&A section. Okay, so we can start. And I would like to start with the conditions for applying. We have a few doubts regarding, for example, where's the... Okay, IELTS score, Chiara. Yeah. What, do we, what does Politecnico di Milano require as IELTS? Okay, we require a uh, six. So I'll go just go back to the slide with the requirements so you have it uh, clear. For IELTS, we require the academic and uh, score, minimum score is six, but also we accept the other uh, certificates you see here on the screen, TOEFL, TOEFL, uh, Cambridge, Trinity. Or for those of you who have studied in English, my, my, maybe from Canada or US or other countries where um, you said it in English, you can avoid this step, you can just provide your transcript, attesting that the English language was the teaching one. Okay, and what about the GPA, Chiara? Mm -hmm. So we, we have um, um, set some specific GPA from countries, uh, from specific countries. So if we talk about US, Canada, uh, and most of European countries, uh, we don't have a specific minimum GPA. Um, but those are available on the website, on the page, polymi.it, uh, International Prospective Students. And you can see the list of countries where we ask um, a specific GPA. Okay, I think that's mainly what we had regarding these uh, requirements. Um, what about the deadlines? I think some of the participants might have missed Mm -hmm. deadline. So what is the deadline for applying? Okay. Okay. So the, uh, the, the first deadline you can consider is March the 5th. So if you wish to enter the September 2020 uh, intake, you have to apply by March the 5th. Uh, that means uh, fill out this application here. So complete all the steps I mentioned here uh, by this deadline. So you have one month. It's enough. To do that. <laughs> uh, European students, so those who have a European nationality, might apply for September 2020 even until May because there is a little mo bit more time because of the fact that the students don't have to go through all the um, uh, embassy thing, uh, but just because of the rules in Europe. Um, but yeah, let's consider March 5th as the first deadline uh, for you guys. Okay, and um, taking into consideration these deadlines, the documentation that the candidates have to send, um, they need to send everything by post, correct? Only the transcript, so transcript and application receipt, which is the PDF file you get at the end of your application. Those are the only two documents we need to get in hard copy, while all the others must be only uploaded on your profile. 
Okay. If the candidate is not accepted, do you send back the, that transcript? No. So what we tell the students is to provide a, a certified copy of the transcript. So it means that is an official document, but it's not the original. You, you get just probably many students get just one copy of the transcript and you can keep it, but get a certified copy of it. And the other option is to, uh, and I repeat it because I know that many US and Canadian university has this opportunity, is to ask the university if they have a direct transcript system, uh, transfer system, sorry. So the university itself can send to us by email or uh, with a code, they can share the transcript of the students. This way, the students does not have to send anything to us. Okay. Do you uh, provide uh, the students with any assistance while applying? Can they contact you, call, Skype? Yeah, we do have a Skype system and of course a chat. I mean, it's like a message system on uh, during the application. And uh, uh, the contact us, uh, that I mentioned at the end, this uh, email, so it's not an email, but uh, it's like a form you can fill up for any questions you, you, you have. Then uh, we will get uh, your emails uh, if you agreed and if, if you left them to uh, Doc City. Um, so we will get your email. We will send you a detailed email, and you can just answer to us uh, directly by email. Okay. Um, one participant is asking if there's any chance to meet and talk in person um, besides Milano. Of course, can they find you in the fairs? Yes, I'll show you that. Let me see if I can share the page. Uh, one moment, sorry, just don't want to go here. Uh, how do I do that? Sorry. Um, this is the website of Politecnico di Milano. Do you see that? No. no we see the we see the presentation. So do stop. Now, okay, now we have it. Now yes, sorry. <laughs> so this is the page. So the polimi.it international prospective students page is where you can find all the information I we, we, we described today, uh, the videos and so on, and also where we're gonna be. So this is meet us in your country uh, section is is like listing and all the, um, the countries where we will be, the cities and so on. And so I hope you are from uh, one of these countries. Uh, otherwise, let us know, we might consider to come uh, to this new country in the future. Okay, that's perfect. Don't worry, everyone, we will send this information also. And I would like to ask the girls, um, do you find Milan an expensive city? Well, actually, what is expensive is housing. So it, I don't, I don't yes. think we can admit that information. Of course, that's important to do, to yes. say. Yeah. Yes, the cost of life for food and everything is pretty reasonable if you know where to go. Sure. But uh, housing is more expensive, definitely. Okay. And difficult to find. So it's, yes. a, yeah. it's a process, but it's a uh, challenge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. But it's doable. Yeah, we have like Milan is a very is a student city, so we have uh, there are a lot like one hundred eighty thousand, uh, sorry, yeah, one hundred eighty thousand students in the city studying here, and it's not big. So housing is a real is a, is an issue is a problem, um, but it's possible. So what we suggest is first of all to consider that you have to come with uh, some money. So have some savings uh, for that mm -hmm. uh, overall. And also um, you should maybe come first, if you are from Europe, let's say, you can come visit Milan, see the areas and uh, like uh, take some appointments for, to see some houses here. Yes. And that's, that's a possibility. If you're from abroad, maybe you come for a period, you stay in a, I don't know, like a temporary place. And then when you are here, you find a place. Yeah. That's the best solution. That's what I have done. And I've been told to never send money before you arrive. Sure. So you really yeah. have to visit when you get here. Yeah. 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 Uh, if you wish, there, there are some um, discounts from ESN, the European Students Network of Politecnico di Milano. So if you Google ESN Polymi, you will find a discount code and also some uh, agencies we, we trust and you can trust too.
Okay, that's great. Um, let's start with the questions about the programs. Um, Chiara, can we maybe go through the bachelors in engineering and the bachelors that Politecnico di Milano offers? Okay, yes, I don't have that in the slide, so I will see that, I will show it here in, uh, in this um, page. You see that, right? You see the yes, one? Yes, program okay. catalog, okay. This is the catalog. Uh, the ones we have in English are architecture, uh, architectural design and from next year. So you don't see it here because this is like from uh, 1920, but from 2021, we will have a civil engineering program in English as well. Okay. The other programs, which are a lot, as you can see, are in Italian. They're in Italian, okay, perfect. What else do we have here? Um, okay, process of transferring for those who are already enrolled in a bachelor's or in a master's, what, what, what can we do to transfer to Politecnico di Milano? Mm. Uh, so if, if we talk about master pro or students, um, you don't just have to do the same application. So complete the same application and uh, get the results from us. If you're admitted, you can come here and then ask for the recognition of the credits you've done before. If you have done any exam, given any exam, that's definitely possible. It's a second step. So the first step is just to fill out the application. Okay. Uh, while for bachelor students, um, it's a little bit different uh, because you have to uh, to take a test. So there is an entrance test in Politecnico. So you have to to come here and do the test or get in contact with the school and see if it's possible to skip the test and to consider your uh, career uh, instead. So, but it's possible to transfer to to a bachelor and master level. Okay. Should we leave the full screen, Chiara, with the contacts for uh, our participants? The sorry, the full screen. The full screen, yeah. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, so they can see very well and be able to reach out to you, because I think the following questions are more uh, specific, so you don't have to show anything else. Um, okay, during the application process, someone has already checked it. Um, this participant came across study program mm -hmm. and is asking if they have to explain all the, the, the disciplines that they have taken during the bachelor's. Is that mm. mandatory? <laughs> okay. um, yes, in, in theory, let's say, the best thing is to have a document from the university if possible. Um, if not, uh, you can describe uh, the core subject. So I don't know where is the student from, but uh, in some countries there are some subjects that are not relevant to the program, but it's compulsory anyway, and it's possible to skip that, so that they can just uh, avoid uh, explaining and describing those, but the core subjects which are important to, uh, con to, to evaluate him for or her for the program they selected uh, must be translated, yes. Okay. I don't know if you, did you have problems with this study plan thing way to get this? Um, creating a study plan or transferring like the, the, credits from a previous year? No, just the, 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 the course description, you have to present up an application. Oh, um, I mean, what I did was I actually just went to my university website and um, the mm -hmm. description of the course and gave all the credentials for each yeah. course. Mm -hmm. So if possible, you can just download it from the university website. If it's not there or, or it's in a different language, you can just select the, the subjects to, to provide us. Or contact with. your coordinator from your previous program, and I'm yeah. sure they can compile. Sure. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the application. And I think this is a very good question for the girls also to comment. Um, what should a portfolio for applying to architecture program include? Very good question. <laughs> I guess um, it, would, it would have to depend on which architecture program you're interested in. So if you're applying for the one in Montava, maybe there is a better balance between architectural design and your interest in history and why you want to um, pursue that program in comparison to the architecture and urban design program. And, um, yeah, I mean, show a well-rounded mm -hmm. um, breadth of work. Mm -hmm. 
um, show your interests, um, and have people review it <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, multiple people. Um, yeah, you take a look that. at your portfolio. Yeah, so basically showing off uh, your capacities and your studio projects that you have done in the past and. Yeah. yeah. So let's say in, in, in general, um, our professors are not really willing to share um, how to create a portfolio for, because they want to see the student's approach, mm -hmm. uh, how the student uh, can select the subject, sorry, the, the, the projects, um, how he creates, like he, the format he chooses, he cho chooses to, to, to present his, his work or her work. So um, it's important to select the projects you consider the best for you mm -hmm. to show how they, the process. So mm -hmm. the result, but also how it began and the, the process to, to, to create it, to, to project it. Um, and of course, don't put 100 projects, not all the projects you've been working mm -hmm. on. Only the <laughs> best. No, quality yes. quality yes. over quantity. Yeah. Exactly. And the last tip I can give is just to um, read in details what's the program about, because the, the programs are different. Uh, they focus on different aspects of architecture and it's important to show uh, projects related to what you apply for, so the program you apply for. So just be sure, be careful when you present the portfolio. It's possible if you choose two programs to present two different portfolios. So maybe you have a very good project which is, in, I don't know, preservation of cultural heritage and it's not really uh, relevant to architecture design but it's important, it's good for Mantua program. And you can just keep it in the first portfolio and put it in the second one. So just some tips. I believe I may have only submitted one, but I can't remember exactly. I well, you've been admitted, so your portfolio was yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are almost done, girls. And this is something also that I would like you to weigh in. What about the admission test? What should the candidate prepare for? What did you do? Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? The application like mm, process? Um, the application process or tests? The admission tests. Uh -huh. um, okay. We did not have any tests. Yeah, there is a difference. So in, uh, for master programs, we don't have tests. Well, the application is the selection moment. So the students uh, who go through this here, uh, that's the test for them. So there's no test in person or like a uh, test to be completed uh, after this. This is the only selection we have. Well, for bachelor students, the, the test is compulsory, but that's just to enter the bachelor's. Oh, okay. These girls here didn't go through that. <laughs> okay, so we can confirm that for uh, Laure Magistrale, there's no need for a test. Nothing. Yeah, that's it. The only thing you have to cough up is on or is this. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, do, we all, do you already have deadlines for 2021, Chiara? Not yet, but uh, this is the, the, let's say, the periods. Um, usually to enter in September, you have to, to apply from September to March. So there are two moments, September, December, January, March. It's gonna be the same probably for next year, but yes, um, check on the website. And again, uh, since we will get your email address uh, through uh, Log City because you've been uh, online with us today, um, we will email you, you will be in, in, included in our database. And as soon as we open the application for 2021, we will inform you. Perfect. Um, what else do we have here? Let me see. Okay, this is 2021. And also, um, is it possible to apply before uh, having the bachelor's degree? Yes. You did, right? That's I think. what yeah. I did, yes. Yeah. 95% uh, of the applicants uh, apply before getting their, their degree, of course, because they want to continue exactly. the ma at master level yeah, straight directly, after. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's definitely possible. You just provide a provisional um, document, so attesting that you will graduate by July, let's say, if you want to enter in September. Um, and then you will provide the final degree. 
Okay. If someone uh, does not get accepted um, in the first intake, can they apply a second time? Uh, they, it's possible to apply once for intake means that if you apply for September uh, in say in the first call you cannot apply for the second call but you can uh, apply for February intake. Okay it's not a problem if no you, okay okay I think it was all that we had as questions of doubts. Okay. Um, do you have anything else to add Clara, Gael, Aman? <laughs> Come to Polytechnic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're hesitating because you're afraid of getting out of your comfort zone, I think you absolutely should. And it's a great Perfect. experience. Yeah. 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 You shouldn't be afraid. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I, as I said, I'm not uh, a student from Polytechnic, but I did have my international experiences and um, I think uh, going abroad for a study experience is um, something everybody should think about. Mm -hmm. uh, there are plenty of opportunities. It's possible to come for with a scholarship. It's possible to um, have low, get loans if, if the problem is funding. Uh, I, rem I just want to remind you that the fees are 4,000 euros per year. It's a top uh, university in, in, in Europe and among the best 150 in the world. So it's not too high compared to what you get and the level of, of setting you get. Um, and yes, going out of the comfort zone is the most important thing. I really hope um, you get this uh, input from us today. Um, consider to go, consider to visit Europe if you come from North America or other countries mm -hmm. outside of Europe um, because it's, uh, it's an experience that you're gonna remember forever, I Absolutely. think. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, come, consider coming, uh, studying at Politecnico Milano um, for your future. It's, it's a great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Chiara. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to the architecture uh, girls. Thank, Thank you. you a lot. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Lucien, for your help. Um, and uh, I hope to see you guys in person now because we don't see you, but uh, <laughs> I would love to see all your faces and on campus here and also in, in, at events we will attend uh, all around the world. Some people are asking about the events. We will send it uh, on the email, okay? Don't worry yes. about that. You will have all the dates and all the information that you need um, to meet Politecnico di Milano. Thank you once again. This was done in partnership with uh, Dr. T. Kufers. We were glad to receive um, Politecnico di Milano and we were so glad that you took the time to join us for this webinar. And remember that you receive an email in the following days. I hope you enjoy it, enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about the webinar and I hope to see you all very soon. Thanks and have a great day or a Ciao. Ciao, thank you. Bye.